Welcome back to Daily Flash. Our next guest, Amy Fox, is a certified nutritionist who believes what we eat directly impacts how we feel. And it also correlates with how we show up in all areas of our life. Amy joins us now with advice on how to master your mood with food. Hi, Amy. Welcome to the show. Hi, Andrea. Thank you so much for having me. Glad so to be here. You've got five tips for nutrition and mental health. Let's start with the first one. You say reduce or eliminate processed foods. Absolutely. So these ultra processed foods are foods you can't recreate in your kitchen. And they usually have a long list of ingredients you don't recognize. But they're like imposters, tempting and convenient, but they lack any nutritional value and just the real goodness of whole foods. So they're typically foods that you might find that are prepackaged or convenient. Goodies like crackers, frozen pizzas, sodas, and you know, they have, you know, think about like bagged chips like these. I know these might be favorites for some, but limiting limiting these is a great idea. Yeah, I always think if it's five ingredients or less, and like you mentioned, ingredients that you recognize, you're pretty much making a safe bet. You also say second on your list, add more protein to your diet. Yes, absolutely. Protein boosts your brain function. Protein is like the secret sauce for your brain. And what it does is it breaks down amino acids and creates these neurotransmitters. And so the more protein we create, the more potential we have for creating these neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. If you've ever heard of those, those help to regulate our mood and are sometimes referred to as the feel good hormones. So yeah, you wanna add more proteins like lean chicken and beef. I've got some of my favorites. I love eggs because they're inexpensive. They're easy to make, you can have them on hand. I also love Greek yogurt because you can whip this into ice creams or just add a lot of fruit and goodness on top. Another key factor, and a lot of people recommend this, is stop eating after dinner. And, and there's a specific time. I mean, how many hours should we, should we sort of plan to eat dinner before we go to sleep at night? You know, so I like to say right around after dinner time, like seven or eight. So we want to close the window on eating because what we're doing is we're fast forwarding energy for tomorrow. So when we give ourselves, our bodies a break after dinner, it allows your digestive system to fully process what you've eaten during the day and your body gets a rest. So it helps you to improve digestion, which leads to just a more restful night's sleep. So you increase your chances of feeling really good in the morning because you've had a good night's sleep. So aim to try to wrap up dinner around that seven o'clock time frame, seven or eight, so you're giving your body a full 10 to 12 hours of rest. You also say fourth on your list is reduce alcohol intake. Yes, alcohol is your best friend of me. It's the master of deception. <laughs> I mean, I've, you know, I've, this is non-alcoholic, but just to help us remember, it really, you know, we all think that um, it's we are unwinding at the end of the day with a glass of wine or that night crap that that's going to help you to just relax and relieve stress. But in reality, the it has the opposite effect. It really does. Alcohol and really not even a lot of it. Unfortunately, it's depressant. And what that means is it affects your ability to produce these your natural happiness chemicals. And it also it definitely impacts sleep. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and had those feelings of worry or what we oftentimes refer to as like anxiety? That's that's the alcohol it's, doing it, definitely. All right, last on your is. list, we'll wrap up with this one. Stay curious. Absolutely. So curiosity can be like an amazing tool because oftentimes we're talking about making healthy lifestyle changes and sometimes we think about that as making a di having a diet or restrictive plan. But when you stay curious, instead of feeling guilty or shame, which can sometimes come along with that, and you really are asking yourself why, it can be like a magic trick. So journaling and really thinking about 
why did I have those cookies really can help you to feel hopeful and help those changes stick. Amy Fox, thanks so much for joining us. For more information, head to foodandmoodlab.com. We'll see you next time, Amy. Thank you. Thank you.